All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo Yoga 730-15IWL. Um, so we're gonna be replacing the screen on this, but we'll also go over what's inside. All right, so we're gonna use a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver to remove the screws from the bottom. You wanna keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way you do that is you put the flat side down like that on your desk in the pattern that you remove them. So here you can see this rectangular pattern, just put them like that. You got three like that, actually you got three like that, and then you got four at the bottom. Okay. Ooh, somebody's honking outside. All right, if this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. These are customer computers. I don't have the funding to just buy a bunch of random computers and take them apart to make videos. Um, so if you're wondering why a lot of times I don't completely disassemble things, it's because the computers are customers and if they come in with a specific issue um, and I tell them something, I accidentally broke something else, that's going to come off weird. So of course I can't really mess around and take apart things that aren't required. Okay. All right. And make sure to watch through the entire video. If the video is too long, you could always play it on two times speed. A lot of times I will say some important tips and tricks that will help you prevent damaging your computer. So keep that in mind. If you skip around, um, sometimes you will skip some steps that will help you uh, prevent damage to your computer, all right? So anyways, all these screws at the bottom appear to be the same length and size. Um, but either way, it's always a good idea to keep the screws in order and not to just mix them all up and throw them all in a pile. Um, most people that repair them, they like to just throw them in a container or something, but I like to try and keep them in order, so that way the screw that came from this exact spot goes back into that exact spot. Alright, so there we go. We got all the screws out. Let's go ahead now and pop this cover off. So a lot of times um, a suction cup will help, but if it doesn't, we're going to have to use another method. So let's see if this works. Okay, it looks like the suction cup worked. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding the other edge of the keyboard assembly or palm rest assembly, and then I'm just pulling with the suction cup, and here you can see it's coming out. Same thing with the sides. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, no. It's a lot harder. Okay, so that doesn't come out as easily. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, I'm going to rotate this. A lot of times it helps to flex the case inwards. So what you do is you pull up on the middle and then you push down on the sides and that will kind of flex it so that the clips kind of pull away from the, the outer casing and helps you open it up. Okay, so here you can see I'm just pushing my fingernail underneath there. Again, you can use plastic pry tools. You don't have to use fingernails. A lot of people don't want to wait and grow out their fingernails or anything, or they don't like long fingernails. So yeah. All right. And then this side, sometimes they'll tuck it under here. Um, it looks like that's how they did it on this model. So I believe there's some clips that actually tuck underneath this part back here. So we are going to have to lift this up slightly and then try and pull this away. But at the same time, we have to get this corner up first. So what I did to get that up was I pushed the cover that way. So I was holding underneath and I pushed the cover that way and lifted. That's how I undid that. So same thing with this one. As you can see, I'm pulling it up that way and then also lifting up the cover. Okay, so once you got these two corners out, hopefully we'll be able to just slide this back. Let's see. Nope, it's still holding on. So, hmm. Okay, something is still holding this case onto here. Does it disconnect? Okay, this is a solid piece of metal in the center, so there's no way that can move. And I'm pretty sure the front, the middle part is also solid. I have to be careful because we unclip stuff, so I'm not going to open it all the way. But yeah, that's solid metal. So, like I was saying, it's most likely tucked under here, but for some reason it doesn't seem to want to come out. So, let's see. Let's get this pushed forward and out again okay oh there we go okay so once you get one side I was holding here where the hinges then you can kind of wiggle this and pull it up and there we go we got the bottom cover off you can see it's pretty dusty and dirty in here so the fans kind of pull air in and then blow air out the back and then you have these vent holes here but then also the speaker grill and that's actually getting dust into it so 
Yeah, all right, so you got a M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here. There's a warranty sticker there, so I'm not gonna take it out. But most likely, excuse me, most likely it has a PH1 or JIS1 screw under there. Okay, let me actually zoom in a little bit here just to get a tiny bit closer view. Okay, that's probably too much, but there you go. All right, so you got that. All right, you got the battery connector here, which we're gonna have to remove first. Um, I'm just gonna do the screen connection or screen replacement. So we're gonna take out the battery, drain the power, and then replace the screen. You got the wireless card here. This is like every other wireless card. There's a screw underneath this foam thing, and then the wireless antennas you pull up from the tails, they pop off. Um, you got the LCD LVDS connector. If you are gonna remove that, Make sure that you disconnect the uh, battery, um, open up the computer, and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. Otherwise, if you mess up or get this slightly off, you can short your computer, um, or even sometimes just the voltage jumping across will be enough to fry the backlight circuit. So you wanna be very careful with that. Make sure that you do drain the battery power. Got the speaker connector here, connecting to this speaker, which has a cable running along to the other speaker. Um, these just have rubber feet that hold it into place. As you can see, you can just pull it out. Okay, um, you got some RAM on here. Most likely there's only one stick that you can replace. Um, but basically what I do is I get underneath here with my fingernail and then pull it up, okay? I just get underneath the little edge of the metal piece where it meets the motherboard and then I just pull it up and here you go. All right, then to get the RAM out, pull these two tabs to the side, it pops up, and then you can pull it back. Um, these are just air bubbles, it seems, so I don't know if there's a second stick of RAM somewhere. If you're curious, <clears throat> you can look up the motherboard on like eBay or something, and then you can try and find pictures of the back. Just look for the laptop model, the Yoga 730-15 IWL, all right, and then look for the motherboard. But anyways, here you got the RAM. This is a PC4 2666V, 8 gigs. So I don't know, if this laptop only has 8 gigs, then there's only one stick and there's no uh, soldered RAM or no secondary slot for RAM, most likely. Um, <clears throat> if it has 16 gigs, which I'm not sure because I didn't really ask the customer for the specs and I didn't really turn on the computer to check the specs, um, then yeah, it might have a second stick or soldered memory. Okay. So anyways, you got the fan connector here. There's some screws holding it. Um, I think it's actually trapped or part of the heat sink. So if you wanted to remove the fans, you could either take the heat sink out or you could possibly take the whole motherboard out. There might be screws or melted plastic. Actually, this one has the melted plastic here holding this in place. So most likely you'd have to take the heat sink out or the whole motherboard out to get access to the fan to take it out. All right, anyways, you got the DC jack or charge port connector here underneath this hinge. Again, I'm not going to be pulling that out, but there's a connector. You kind of just wiggle it to pull it out. Um, and then you got the keyboard connector here, keyboard backlight connector here. Um, these things don't seem... Okay, this says JTP, so that's the touchpad. And then JFP1, so this is a fingerprint sensor, most likely. Okay, so... Oops. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up. And all right, so let's go ahead and clean this up. I'm gonna clean the dust out real quick and then I'll be back. We're gonna disconnect the battery and then drain the power and go ahead and remove the screen. Again, if you wanna see how to remove all these things, I have a bunch of videos showing that on a lot of other laptop models. These have little flip latches. And then again, these little chips, they kind of just come up at an angle and you pull them out. Anyways, I'm gonna clean the dust up and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So we cleaned up the bottom cover. So here you can see it's a lot cleaner now. There's not all that brown dusty stuff in there. Okay, so we're gonna set the cover aside. Let's go ahead now and disconnect the battery. So let's see. All right, so this one, I'm not actually gonna be taking the whole battery out because on here, I can actually disconnect the battery without pulling it out. If you're wondering though, the battery model number, let's see. There's a lot of numbers here. Okay, I think it's this one. L17L3PE0, okay. Now let's go ahead and disconnect the battery. So the way you do that, usually if you can, you would get onto this clip here. Let me show this. 
or it's not really a clip, but so this thing, this part is kind of a little bit taller. So I just use my fingernail there. And then with also pulling this cable, I'm going to kind of go from side to side, slowly pulling that out while also pulling the cable. Okay. And that's basically going to slowly walk the battery connector out. If you want, you can like pull left, right, left, right like that. And here you go. There you go. It pops out easily just like that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the computer. This one's very slippery, but slowly, carefully open it up. And then, like I said, we're going to press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds. So the power button is actually on the side here, but you do want to keep the computer open because if the computer is closed, um, usually the power button does not respond. So you want to have the computer open so that way when you press and hold the power button, it will act as if you're trying to turn the computer on and that will drain the residual power from it. Okay, so there we go. All right, I have a customer outside. I need to get their computer real quick, so I will be back. So anyways, we're going to close this for now. All right, and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So let's go ahead and remove the screen now. So just to be safe, I'm going to put the bottom cover back on because I don't want this to touch anything. So what we're going to do, just get this back. Again, as you can see, there are these little clips that stick out there so that's why it's kind of difficult to get the bottom cover off so you do have to kind of get that bottom cover part in first so you kind of have to lift it at an angle here a little bit and get that in let me see I might have to work on it sideways so I can see better but, uh, let's go ahead and lift this up I think for now we don't actually have to do that but there you go you can see that clip went in okay I'm gonna get that clip in sure those clips all go in might have to help pull it a little bit this side doesn't for some reason this one clip didn't go in okay well I'll all of them except for one so let's go ahead and pull that back up so same thing I'm gonna try and wiggle and pull this and there we go okay we're gonna go at an angle and then work our way down okay sliding that in and there we go that got them all in okay so I'm gonna just clip this back so that way when I open up the screen it's not going to cause any issues okay so let's go ahead now and flip this screen all the way open okay and now what we're going to be doing is um, removing these bottom little plastic covers you can use plastic pry tools or whatever works for you I'm going to use my fingernails though I might have cut my fingernails too short and dull so it might not work but we'll see I might have to use the pry tools okay so usually what you do is you get in between the glass here Okay, and then you can lift this up. So here you see, okay, just like this, kind of just wiggle it and pop it out and here you go. So here you can actually see the clips, how it's designed. There's that small clip on this corner here and then there's this clip on the side and then the bottom also has like a small clip right there. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. Don't mix these up. You can't switch their places. You do have to put it back in the same one you got it from, right? We're gonna do the same thing with this side as well. Just get in that little gap in between the glass you want to be very careful because we are prying right next to the glass if you use something too hard you can um, the pressure of trying to pry it up can crack the glass so you want to be very careful there okay so we're gonna try and pry this up okay it's a little tough to get out come on wow it's this one this side stuck really bad okay so let me show you with a pry tool if I have one so basically get that into there and then you're trying to just pop this up see even with pry tools it's it's actually very difficult so I actually work better with my fingernails so okay so here you can see the clip is more towards the inside so we got to pry more over here to try and get that clip out but again, I cut my fingernails kind of short now, so now they're kind of more useless. But, uh, okay, let's try with the pry tool again. Come on. Yeah, it doesn't want to come out. It's such a pain. Okay, I think it's coming up. All right, we got part of it up. So now let's go ahead and pull this out. And there we go. Okay. Now we got to get the long one. The long one is also pretty difficult to get out. Same idea though. 
kind of pulling up there, though you can also help from the bottom like this. Okay, let me see if I can, no, actually no, you can't pull it from there, so you do have to pull it from the top one. Okay, it's coming out, and there we go. And then once you get it started, it's a bit easier because you can use this to kind of help pull it. All right, so here you can see as I pull it, this little clip comes out from underneath and then it comes up. See, as you can see, it comes out a lot easier now. Just pull the whole plastic down and there we go. You can unclip those. Okay, so we're just gonna do this along the entire thing and wiggle it, wiggle it, and there we go. So you can see these are the clips that go into the top and then these are the ones that go into the bottom. When you put this back, you actually want to get the top in and then you can actually clip this down. So we're gonna set that aside and I'll show you that when we get to that point. All right, so there's two screws under here and then there's um, usually stretch, uh, stretch release adhesives under here, but I actually don't see any stretch release adhesives here. So normally there's pull tabs that you grab here and you have to stretch that ad adhesive and pull it out. And you want to pull it, oops, too far. And you want to pull it straight back to undo the adhesive, okay? So anyways, let's go ahead and remove these PH1 or JIS1 screws. So there's two screws here. Wait, are they actually PH0? These are, okay. I guess let's switch to the PH0 or JIS0 screwdriver. These don't look like it. They look like PH1 or JIS1, but all right, use the PH0 or JS0 screwdriver. Remove those two screws. Okay, once you got those two screws and you've got the adhesive strips here, um, they'll usually tuck one underneath the LCD LVDS cable here. So usually I have to use like tweezers to get underneath and then lift it up. But for some reason, there's no stretch release tabs here. So I'm wondering if somebody worked on this before. But anyways, let's see. Actually, they might have an adhesive under there still. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know what's going on. Somebody must have worked on this and undid the adhesive because normally you can just pull this up slightly. And what we have to do is we have to slide the glass downwards. So let's see. Okay, we can slide it down without removing, without lifting it, it looks like. Okay. So I don't know if you saw. So here you can see where the screw holes are. Let me actually zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so you can see where the screw holes are. You can actually slide this glass. So I push down here and then I pull with my fingers and you can see it slides down, okay? So it slides up and down and that unlatches it. Okay, so let's zoom back out. Okay, so once you slide the glass down, then we should be able to lift this whole thing up. You want to be careful because this cable is here. So I'm going to actually try and lift from this side. Okay. Just like that. And there you go. It actually comes up pretty nicely. Okay. So, and then to make it easier and safer to work on, what I like to do is I like to close, close the computer. Okay. Not all the way, but just enough. So like this, and then that way we can let the screen fall forward and it will catch it. Okay. So here you can see just like this. Wow, they put a lot of copper in there. Okay, so now that we got that, we're gonna slowly, carefully pull the screen backwards. Okay, and you wanna make sure that you're not yanking on that cable down there, the LCD LVDS cable. Okay, you can see it's actually coming out from the slot there. And I don't know if this is how it's supposed to be. They got all these thermal pads back there. Um, and then these magnets are actually holding the screen onto the um, other side. So if I want to move it, I kind of have to lift the screen up separate from the base. And then I can kind of rotate it out a little bit. Okay, but again, I don't know. They have all these thermal pads here. Let's go ahead and actually open the replacement screen and see if it's the same design. comes in a giant box all right and then it comes wrapped in this thingy they have a little barcode there anyways let's go ahead and unwrap it sorry I know it's off camera it's hard to film this because my computer the computer's there okay so 
So let's go ahead and tear the packaging open. Oh, be careful, I had to push it a little bit. Okay. All right, comes wrapped like this, styrofoam, and then they have tape on all four sides. So I'm gonna cut open on three sides so that I can easily open this packaging. Okay, sorry, I know it's off camera. Okay, so we cut open three sides and we left one, and now we can open the packaging kind of like a laptop. Okay, so we have that. I'm gonna open this just like a laptop there. Okay, and we got it inside of this. And let's go ahead and lift this out. So I ordered this on Amazon and they had one day shipping. So let's see, hopefully it's working okay. Do you need to um, tape this? Oh, the tape just tore. Okay, so let's untape this. There we go. All right, so now that we got that, let's go ahead carefully grab the screen and slide it out. Oh, they put a piece of plastic on top. Or actually, is that the LCD? <laughs> okay, that's the back of the screen and they gave these um, adhesive strips, but uh, we're not gonna use that. Um, I don't know if you noticed, they didn't use any adhesive strips on this. Okay, um, so this screen, I don't know why, but they have this black film on top. I don't think you're supposed to remove this. I think they coated it because they wanted to use a different screen and yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to peel this off, am I? No, I don't think you're supposed to peel this off because they did put their like warranty kind of sticker there. So yeah, it looks like they taped, is it? No, it's taped over the top. So I don't know, technically I could just peel this whole thing off, but um, I don't think I'm supposed to. This one has this. Actually, is the design different here? The design is a bit different, so I guess we'll find out. I hope this screen will actually work with it. I probably should have taken a closer look. Let me see, I'm gonna put this back here and let's take a look and see if it looks the same or at least very similar. Okay, that all lines up. Looks like they do have the Lenovo logo, so this has this where you can peel it off. And they put a thing over the Lenovo logo, it looks like. So let's go ahead and peel. Oh, huh. Is this a scratch? Can I peel this off or clean that off? Hmm. Oh no, so this has some weird coating thing here. I don't know if I can scrape that off or if it's permanent or what. Okay, that's weird. So I don't know what this stuff, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know what this stuff is here. Um, okay, I'm gonna clean that off. I might have to ask the customer what they wanna do because the screen, it doesn't have the Lenovo logo and it has a weird rectangle there. So I don't know if they're gonna be okay with that. Anyways, let's go ahead and fold up the piece of paper. Let's try cleaning this with some rubbing alcohol and nope, it just stays there. So I don't know what that thing is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's it's permanently there. I don't think we can take that off with anything. So I don't know if it would even show the Lenovo logo there, but it has that black thing there. So, I guess we'll find out. Um, the customer is, it, their screen kind of works. The only thing is it kind of flickers on and off. So I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll see if this improves it at all or not. Okay, so we are going to have to transfer this stuff over it seems. I don't know why there's all this aluminum or not aluminum, copper stuff here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to be careful peeling this up if I'm going to reuse their old screen. Yeah, this is, I don't know if this is going to work. The customer might 
will likely want me to get one that's with the Lenovo branding. Um, so I'm going to have to likely return that, but I guess at least we can kind of test to see. I think Amazon will have good returns, so we shouldn't have to worry about it. All right, so we're going to slowly peel this up. So this has the camera, microphones, and other sensors. We're just peeling up this adhesive. We have to be very careful here. It looks like someone replaced this screen before, so I think this has been replaced before. It's not... Okay, can I pop this connector off? I'm going to see if I can disconnect this. And yes, I can. So let's go ahead and see if we can transfer this over. I'm slowly trying to pull and peel this camera sensor bar up, but it's holding pretty strong. Wow, that's holding on really strong on there. Okay, let's go ahead and peel this then. Okay, slowly work our way down. There's the adhesive there, kind of holding it. All right, let's flop this back over. Oh, that thermal pad stuff there is coming out. Okay, let's go ahead and peel this up. Okay, so then they have this touch connector here. So we're gonna go ahead and peel this off. And then we're gonna go ahead and wiggle and pull this connector back. So this is the um, sense or the sorry. This is the connector for the digitizer, the touchscreen. I'm gonna wiggle that and get that out just like that. Okay, you can see these connectors are separate. So we're gonna go ahead and peel this up again. I don't know if this is how it normally is. It looks like somebody definitely changed the screen on this before. Okay, so this isn't the original. Um, and it looks like they put all this thermal pad stuff here. So I'm kind of curious if I just took this thermal pad stuff off, um, if it would fix the problem for him. So maybe I shouldn't be replacing the screen, especially since it has that weird thing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to contact the customer and see what they wanna do. Um, but I will just at least test this screen just to see if it powers up and works um, But yeah, okay, so we're gonna stick that side down. Let's go ahead and peel this side up All right, once you peel up this you can go ahead and peel this connector off Okay, so we're gonna peel this plastic tab up then there's this metal latch. We're going to flip that back. Once you flip that back, you can use that metal latch at the bases to push the connector out. And there we go. We've got the LCD LVDS connector out. And this, that goes into the cameras. We do still have to pull the cameras out from the top. But um, I'm not sure if it's just held in there with some adhesive. But it holds really strong, so... Yeah, okay. So it's just held in here with some adhesive, so you have to carefully peel this back. Try not to bend it too much. Okay, try and keep it as flat as possible. Because if you bend it too much, you can um, damage them, okay? There's a connector here, it looks like, that this is separately. It can be separately removed for the cameras and stuff up here. But uh, these are held in really strong with an adhesive. Okay, so we have to carefully, slowly and carefully peel this back. Okay. Yeah, these, these connectors, or sorry, these sensors and stuff are really difficult to pop off. They are held in with some strong adhesive. But uh, if you go slow and gentle, it looks like they eventually peel up. Okay, we're gonna also have to peel this tape back up. All right. Sorry, it's hard to keep that in view of the camera. Okay, I think we got all of it out. Yep. So you can see the camera there, the LED light. Um, I'm not sure if this is a microphone. 
yeah, there's a lot of sensors in here. These look like microphones. So, it looks like, is there a rubber piece missing from this microphone? So this microphone is missing uh, the rubber piece. So, normally the microphones have that rubber piece there. Okay, so anyways, we're going to put this one away. Um, again, that screen is working, so I don't know. But whoever worked on it before, they put all those thermal pads. I wonder if that's what's causing the problem. Because the customer said that, excuse me, over time it goes bad. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to actually even work. Because this one, the plastic, it has all these little... Oops, let me zoom out. This one, the plastic, has all these things for the microphone. I'm zooming out in and out too much. So this one has these little holes over here for the microphones. But uh, this one doesn't have that. So I might end up having to just put it back. I'm going to try taking out the thermal pads and we'll see. Because this isn't the actual... This doesn't even say Lenovo on it. Okay. Let me take a look at the tops of it again, closer up. Yeah, actually, so this screen doesn't have the um, same uh, plastic bezel around it with the, yeah, it doesn't have the plastic bezel trim on it. So I'm. it looks like I'm just gonna take out the thermal pads from here and reuse the old one and just make sure see if that will fix the problem. So if the customer is lucky, it could be that whoever put these thermal pads, that was a bad idea and maybe that was messing it up. So I'm actually gonna take these thermal pads out. Okay. So again, it looks like someone changed the screen before. It's not, it doesn't look like the original. So what we're gonna do is, we're now gonna just reassemble everything. Um, let me actually put the screen stuff back in up here. Okay. So that kind of sucks. Alright, so we're just going to line all of this back up and stick everything back into place. Oh, there's some dust in the camera lens, so I need to make sure to clean that out. Okay. All right, let's go ahead now and get the camera lens back in and everything. So this one, I'm probably going to have to look from the front to be able to make sure that I get the camera in right. Okay. Let's go ahead and line this up. There's too much adhesive on this thing, it's kind of annoying. Okay, so the camera is centered. All right, so now that we got the camera centered, hopefully everything else will just um, fall into place properly. Okay, sorry, I know this isn't what you were expecting from this repair, but it is what it is have to do what I have to do. Okay. So again, you're going to want to check yours because this looks like somebody modified it. It doesn't look like the original at all. I don't think any of this copper stuff is necessary here. Um, so this has a bunch of like thermal pads underneath the copper as well. So maybe that's what happened. Maybe there was the thermal pads um, attached directly to here. And then um, they put tape. And then maybe that's what messed it up. I'm not sure. Um, if anybody has the model that was untampered with, um, just let us know in the comment section below what you see underneath of yours. But anyways, we're going to get this connector back in. Just line it up. Use the metal latch to help pull that into place. All right, once you get that, lock that latch back down. All right, put this adhesive tape back down into place. 
Okay, we're gonna now put this copper stuff back over. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get this connector back in. Sorry, I know it's zoomed out kind of far, but I mean, you guys get the idea. We're just reconnecting everything. Get this one line back up. All right, make sure it goes in straight. You don't wanna push that in crooked. I like to pinch both pieces together like this to make sure everything goes in right. Okay, now we're just gonna line this back up over here. Let me zoom back out again. Okay, we're gonna reattach this connector up here. Just line it up and push it down. Okay, looks like it's reconnected properly. Okay, again, somebody tampered with this, so this isn't how it's supposed to be. So, hopefully this video is still useful to you guys. But anyways, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift the screen back up. And then while the screen is slightly lowered, let me rotate this so it's easier for you guys to see. Okay, while the screen is like this, we're gonna go ahead and slide it up into place. Um, if you want, you can actually fold the screen back, or the, well, the screen or the keyboard back, whichever you wanna consider. All right, slide that back into place. All right, there we go. And then we're going to make sure that this is all in place. Okay, make sure these cables lay flat. You don't wanna pinch them or damage them. All right, let's go ahead and put back the PH0 or JIS0 screws. There we go. Just those two. I'm going to want to power it on just to make sure before I put all the clips and everything back in. Okay, there's a lot of gross stuff on the screen here. All right, so let's go ahead and open or close this back up. Okay, we're going to now reattach the battery connector. So again, I'm going to start with the suction cup down here, pull that up, and I don't know if somebody messed with this and messed it up either, so for all I know, it might not be able to open that way or that easily, but anyways, all right, same thing with this side, just like before, we're going to pull the case over that way while we're kind of lifting up, there we go, and we're going to go over to this side, same thing, get underneath push it over while pulling it up and then now we're going to pull it over that way while we're lifting okay oh, make sure that's unclipped and there we go okay wiggle that around and there we go let's go ahead now and just reconnect the battery pinch that back into place get these all back lined up and push down okay let's go ahead and get the bottom cover back on um, sorry, it's, okay, so it's a little tricky, but start at an angle like this, and then slowly work your way over, pushing those down as you get the case back into place. Yeah, it's caught on something, there we go, okay, there we go, put that all into place. All right, let's open this and power it up first, just to see if it, make sure it's turning on okay. Open this up, and let's power it back on. Power light is coming on. It might take a while because we disconnected the battery, so we'll give it a little bit. Okay, power light is still on. There you go, screen came up and it's spinning. So the customer felt that it was a thermal issue, so we're going to see, um, and oops, the touchscreen does still work as you can see so everything seems okay um, but again it looks like they used an aftermarket screen here so I'm gonna shut this down um, actually it's always a good idea to restart one time so I'm gonna restart it one time um, but let's go ahead and put everything else back together um, I took these extra thermal pads out we'll see if that helps I'm wondering if it was putting pressure on the back inside here um, and that might have been what it was instead of um, the temperature or it might have been a combination so 
let me take a look. When he was showing it to me, it was showing some ghosting on the screen. So yeah, we're going to have to see about that. Anyways, let's go ahead now and oops. I'm gonna put the other screen, I'm gonna put the screen back in because I didn't realize this one was not the same. And also the Lenovo thing doesn't um, come out. So the branding is all messed up, covered. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna just repackage the screen and return it, which sucks. I was hoping it would be replaced and fixed, but instead, now we just opened it up the computer and saw. All right, so I kind of still see some ghosting there, so I don't think, I think the screen is actually still bad, but Anyways, hopefully this video at least helped. I'm gonna return this screen and then we're gonna see what the customer wants to do. Um, but yeah, okay. All right, the computer's off. Let's go ahead and flip this back and I'm gonna put these little bottom pieces back in first. So this one, again, like I was saying, you slide the top edge where the glass is first, okay? Once you get everything lined up, all right, then you can go ahead and clip these down. Is it getting caught on something? Maybe this cable's not lined up right. Okay. All right, so let's get this back in. Just like that. And then you can go ahead and clip that into place. So there you can see. All right, clip that into place. Clip that into place. Make sure the top is in and then clip it down. All right, there we go. And we got these little bottom side pieces. Um, same thing. This one you can actually get the left side or the outer edge in first and then just click it in. Same thing, outer edge in first and then click it in. All right, oops, you can click that in right. It's not lined up. All right, so there we go. I think, why is this one like sticking up a little bit? Something's not lined up right here. Is this? No, that's fine. Something's not lining up right here. Let me try getting the left side in here first then. All right, that worked. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna flip this over and now all we're gonna do is just put back these screws. Oops, I accidentally turned the computer back on, but anyways, let's close this back up and put back the T5 or Torx 5 screws. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, um, hopefully this video helped you guys. Again, if it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others. If it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay as I put back the rest of the screws. And other than that, I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's get all these screws back in. Now I know to look for a screen to make sure it has that bezel in place and then also make sure to ask them that the Lenovo logo is there. Okay, so I'm going to have to confirm because it looks like I might have to find a pulled um, screen from another actual Lenovo. This one they said it was a new screen for this model but apparently was different than I was expecting, so let's go ahead and get this. It might have been still usable, but then I would have had to peel the uh, plastic frame with the rubber part out from the original old screen, um, but that would be really risky, especially since this screen semi works. It's not like completely bad. So I didn't want to risk damaging that screen, especially since this one has that weird rectangle there and not the actual Lenovo logo. So yeah, it would be fine if the thing was like all glass, but because they covered it with some kind of paint there and made it like a different color and texture, then it makes it a lot more noticeable that it's not, um, that something's wrong. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. All right? Let's drop this. Bye.